Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you to talk about the fine art of letting people down. And you know, this is something that has really been a learning process in my recovery journey from chronic fatigue syndrome. And I have to admit that I am a reformed people pleaser. And prior to the illness, you know, I was a people pleaser. I love people and it was made me really uncomfortable when people were not okay with me saying no or if they wanted me to do something and I wasn't available. It really made me massively uncomfortable. And so it's kind of interesting how uh, when you're hit with CFS, suddenly things change and you're not able to be available to people anymore because you have severe uh, limitations. And so I just kind of want to go over some things that have helped me in my journey and share with you. And the first thing is to honor the no. So you know when this happens because there's something in your gut or you get some kind of signal from your body when you've been asked to do something or there's an opportunity you could do and you know that it doesn't feel right for you. And so just honor that feeling because that is your uh, emotional brain letting you know this is not the best thing for you. And one thing I had to learn to trust was that if it wasn't the best thing for me, then it wasn't the best thing for the other person either. And that things were gonna work out well for them even if I wasn't able to do whatever it was that they needed, okay? That someone else would come on their path or the you know what they needed would come together for them. So there's a lot of trust in that and trusting God and trusting you know powers that be to create what that person needs for them. The second thing is to honor your yes. So for me it's been a real journey in learning how to find the things that I love doing so that my energy can grow as I'm recovering and putting those things into my energy into things that will fulfill me in the recovery path. And so, you know, for me, it's things like doing my videos. It's really, you know, brings me a lot of joy. And another thing is writing and creating stories and traveling, as a lot of you know, and things like that. So there are um, things that I want to do, but even in every moment, it may not be a big decision. I have a little card on my wall that says, what is something I really want to do right now? What would be most fulfilling? Because when you're recovering from a debilitating illness like chronic fatigue, what you want to do is let that kind of energy help work for you. Because uh, things are challenging enough to be done, so if you can find things that you love doing, that actually helps create energy. So that's really helped me, is to honor my yes and find those yeses. And if I didn't know what they were, create them. So the third thing that I have found that's helped me is to honor your capacity. So, you know, you could be at any stage of this illness. If you're severe and you're bed bound and house bound, your capacity is going to be much lower, just like mine was when I was at that stage in recovery. And as you begin to recover, um, suddenly your energy is becoming available th for things, but you're still limited. You have so much of a capacity, and so you have to make really important choices about where you're going to put that energy. So when you're in the crash stage of the illness, which can last years and years, if you don't get the right resources and help and physical support, um, if you're in that crash phase, your body says no for you because you simply cannot do anything that anyone might ask of you. However, as you begin to move along the recovery path and you begin to regain energy, it's a really important time to make sure that you honor your capacity because there are going to be things that you have energy available for and things that you don't. And from the outside, someone might say, well, why aren't you doing this when you can do this? And you might even ask yourself that yourself. Why can I not do this activity or event, but I can do this. And so a lot of it is learning how to work within your capacity as I've talked about before and I'll do more video on baseline so you actually know what level you are at and what you can do. And then again, it's making hard choices on where that energy is going to go and being okay if people aren't happy with the choices that you have to make in order to honor your capacity.
So that's a really important one. And the next one that I found on my journey has really helped me is honor your priorities. And so for me as a wife and mom, that's my priority. My kids, my husband, those things come first. And then there's my immediate family, my mother who lives near me. Those are my immediate energy investments. And so what that means is people outside of that, as much as I may love them and want to see them, my energy and my level of recovery is going to dictate the choices where I spend, whether I go to events and activities outside of this inner core priority or whether I choose to say no and just invest my time in those primary relationships. And so these are challenging things, but you know what? It's a really good learning process because when you have, when you don't have the uh, limitations of CFS, there are still limits to life. And so I think pre-CFS, I didn't realize that. You know, I just thought that my energy should be unlimited and my time should be available to everyone that needs it. And it's been a real learning process for me to understand that that isn't the case at all. That I'm called in this life to make very important choices on where that energy, where my time goes. And so, you know, as I'm coming out, as I'm still, as I always say, I'm still in recovery and people wonder, well, why are you still in recovery? Well, you know, I am so happy for how far I've come from the bedbound and housebound days. Um, so, you know, given that I'm still in recovery, though, this has just been such a learning process for me. And I love the fact that I don't feel like I'm a people pleaser anymore because a situation just came up recently that normally in the past would have really thrown me because it involved people's judgments about my decisions and things like that. And it was just the first time where I was like, that, well, actually it was the second time where I just realized it really doesn't matter anymore what they think because I make choices based on what I need to do for my health, for my recovery, for the priorities and the people that are in my life. And so, you know, what, what instigated this video, I remember a couple of months ago, I just come back from an extremely intensive travel. It was the most intensive that I've done to date. And on my return, you know, I was working to get back to my baseline and I was wobbly and there were things that I let slide for that reason. And I just found it very interesting when someone said something to me that was kind of insinuating their disappointment and how I had not handled something that I knew was covered by someone else. And I just, again, it was that epiphany right there. I said, I'm doing a video someday about the fine art of letting people down because I, I could tell I had let that person down, but it was really okay with me. And so, you know, I'm not saying let's just, you know, let people down all the time and not be there for people. But when you are trying to get your life back and people outside do not understand the challenge you go through, the journey you're on, it doesn't matter because it's not their journey to make sense of, it's your journey to make sense of. So I'm the one who's learning the lessons that have been brought into my path. And you know what, they're on another path and I just need to let them learn what they need to learn on theirs. And part of that is that I'm not available for anything that they need. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to just beat that bush, but it's just a real interesting and important priority, uh, interesting thing in my recovery. And the last thing would be, as always, honor your recovery. Your recovery takes time, it takes energy, it takes thought, it takes a concerted effort to invest what you need for to get your life back. So I want to encourage you to always, always honor your recovery. Take care, warriors, and remember, life isn't over, it's starting again.